the company exists already 22 years and it was born in 1988 by the way guys i took this from the company itself the website so you can go all to company's website and you actually can see it in more details you practically will see every step what the company did company during that period of time uh, they changed quite a lot of uh, had structural changes a lot now uh, and as you can see in uh, 2007 they went public but the interesting thing about the way they went public, it's not the whole company and the whole company went public, but only 15% of the company made public. So the rest of it, it's owned by um, Dell and uh, one more company, which I'm going to show you a bit later. Okay, and that's what we see right now. Now, and uh, company has a lot of joint venture partnership with the huge companies like Amazon, Cisco, and other like leaders in that particular industry. And I presume when they have this joint vertical partnership or kind of uh, collaboration with their products, uh, it's enhanced their ability to stay in the market as a leader as well. Okay. Now, uh, here's some Russian language for those who want to learn. So because I just run the Russian masterclass one hour ago, and uh, it seems like I didn't translate these letters, but basically what it's saying that you can guys can go to these uh, links and to read more about it. Uh, in Wikipedia, if you go VMware, or you can go to website itself, and you can see quite a lot of about this company as well. Now, uh, when I decided to see how they present themselves globally. Uh, you already probably understood that this company is present definitely in Australia because uh, Max, um, Mr. Vlasov uh, was dealing with that, but that's what I've done. So world headquarters, and you can see that they have presence in North America, Europe, Asia Pacific, Latin America, Middle East, Africa. Uh, this company is global company. Why it is important to know? Because if you invest in, in a company which is located in one specific region only. So if that region has some problems, uh, economical problems, political problems, any other problems, uh, the results like profitability of that company can be affected quite a lot. Now, uh, if the company is global, it constantly gets affected by some kind of issues in different regions, but generally because the business is so huge, if one region is affected, other regions they're producing revenue and income for that specific business all right now uh, and um, i just uh, uh, Vlad, uh, max uh, mentioned uh, uh, about the big companies but look where their software kind of is involved so we can see it's again from their last presentation which we may run so we can see mobile phones i presume it's a planchette right so it's computers desktop watch Right, uh, I presume it's like wind, uh, probably meals. And this is, I presume, home appliances, so something like that, uh, satellite system, planes, cars, and etc. So they actually have some kind of uh, linkage to practically any gadget which you're using right now. So, which is, I presume, pretty amazing. Okay. And uh, uh, here, I for some guys who understand this, I just put the list. It's from Wikipedia. Uh, what they've done, they showed which areas they're covering. So desktop software and some software, like uh, one of the most popular here, then server software, cloud management software, application management software, uh, storage and availability software, networking and security products, and other products as well. So quite huge range of products in quite huge area of geographic locations. Uh, very different clients level from small to bigger. Okay, I presume this company has certain uh, strength in order not only to compete on the market, but stay for many, many, many years to come in the future. All right. Now, this was more like business analysis. We didn't go into financial analysis yet. We're going to do it now in a second. But before I go, I wanted just to ask you from zero to 10, how you understand this company now. And then we'll, we'll go ahead uh, to look at already at fundamental analysis itself. This is a part of fundamental analysis as well, uh, but it's not financial analysis, all right? Okay, Nick is 19, even. oh, cool. Okay, fantastic. Fantastic. Okay, great, guys. So let's 
uh, see again value line report. Again, it's the same company where we did the screening. And uh, I like this specific company because it shows us information uh, about this company straight away for many, many years, right? Uh, if you don't load the, like a balance sheet or cash flow statement or profit and loss statement from the company, uh, you might see only one year, two, like usually two to three years, right? So whereas here, can you imagine from 2005 until now? So 15 years, when you see how company was uh, operating within the last 15 years, believe me, it's pretty cool, right? You, ha you can have a lot of uh, ideas about the performance. And of course, based on the performance in the past, you can tell how much, uh, how company is going to operate in the future as well. All right. Now let's uh, start maybe from the simple thing, like they have no dividends. And for the last 12 months, um, we, when like we already knew what happens with the economy, uh, I try to introduce the companies like uh, more like uh, protective assets, active uh, companies, which pay big dividends. Because if uh, the crisis started in the economy and the price of your stock drops down, and, but you believe that this company is good and is going to continue to thrive in the future, uh, it's good to get some kind of cash and flow at least. All right. So that's why I like personally companies with dividends. But in this particular field, uh, sometimes it's much better instead of paying dividends to the to the investors to reinvest those money this money into the different projects and actually make more money after that. Now let's have a look what is happening with this industry. Just a second, I close my. Okay. Uh, the current price is actually one hundred and thirty-four dollars. When the report was done, the price was one hundred and forty-two dollars. At the moment, is low. Now, company believes that timeliness is two. Uh, at the moment, I think it's even one. They changed it, uh, improved it. So it means that the company itself has the highest potential for price performance within the next 12 months. Now, the beta volatility, uh, zero nine, it tells us that it's actually less volatile than the market. Uh, basically, when you look at the market and if you believe that market is going to move, like you say, $1, uh, this company is going to move less than a dollar. Okay, so it's less volatile. But at the same time, when the market goes down and for $1, so this company is going to be moving less than $1. Okay. So that's why it's a very con kind of controversial uh, parameter because in some cases, you wouldn't like it because if uh, the index is growing up and economy is thriving, this particular company is going to grow less. But if we look at current situation, what is happening in the market, market is so overvalued and we might expect that the market is going to go like to have at least reset or pull back. We know that this company is less volatile. And even if the market collapses, this company also might collapse, but it will fall less than the market of general. So market might go down 10%. This company will go only maybe six, 7%. Okay. So it's, it's better in any way. Now, value line personally believes, like, I mean, not personally, value line believes that um, the future price within the next three to five years, based on value line valuation, uh, we're going to compare their valuation with our valuation, right? Uh, they believe that it might be between $175 to, to $265. Quite a big range. I presume you agree, like nearly $100, like $90, right, in range. And that's why the growth rate also varies. It could be from 5 to 17% of annual growth in order to achieve those targets. Now, also value line start giving us um, the kind of short-term performance, like within the next uh, one and a half year, where the price can be. And you can see it can be from $102 to $250. Okay, the middle part, it would be $177, which is 25% uh, above current price, the 102. Now it's even more. Now, I presume they calculate uh, this 102 based on uh, their peer ratio. So they have peer ratio, the lowest peer ratio within the last five years, it was 14. So what they do, they look at current earnings, $6.60 per share, multiply probably by 14, and that's how they get 102. 
Okay, so that's the evaluation. We will come up probably to the same number, uh, but doing our own valuation. But by the way, guys, it doesn't really matter how you evaluate the company, the formals could be different, but if uh, the analyst is correct, I mean, it has to be close to the same numbers, all right, and anyway. Okay, let's have a look at very interesting thing about this uh, specific company. Uh, first line is a revenue. Okay, per share. And uh, this line, you can see it here. I presume you see my mouse. Uh, revenue uh, for the whole company. Uh, and if you see that, that in 2005, company was selling $1.60 uh, per share of the product. Okay, so if you take the whole company and divide it by amount of shares, they would sell only $1 of the product. But look now, $27. So they like nearly 20 times higher. Okay, so start selling more. Okay, the sell is a sell. For us, it's more important how much money they make, uh, net profit. So there was 20 cents here, and now at $6 here. Okay, that would be about 30 times more than they were here. So the company is growing. And if you try to see how the company was affected by crisis, which I personally like to like look at, uh, because if we know the company wasn't affected the previous crisis, maybe it's more stable, uh, going to be more stable in the future crisis as well. So that's what we do. Look, 2005, once $1, $2, $3, $4, $5, $6, $8. Dollars. So it's actually went through all the way. And it wasn't even one year in the last 15 years period where the company didn't grow in sales, didn't increase in sales. So guys, if you wanted to invest in business, would you, would you think it is important parameter that the company year after year increase amount of sales they sell? Not the same level, but actually getting better and better and better, okay? So the next parameter is uh, net earnings. So it's like cash, uh, whatever they, not the cash, it's actually uh, net profit. So it's the profit which you receive after all expenses, okay? And after taxes are paid. So the company started from 20 cents and look what happened after that, 26, 61, 73. Opa, you can see here in 2008, in nine, it was affected. The sales level went up, but the earnings level dropped down. So it tells us in majority of cases that company reduced their margin. So probably they had, even bigger amount of sales, but they created a smaller margin in order to attract more clients. And also very important thing that a lot of companies during this kind of crisis time, what they do, they're trying to acquire new clients because they're trying to steal the clients because it's a difficult time. Small companies, they get into liquidation, bigger companies, they're actually getting bigger. And after that, look, the company in 2008, it's practically doubled. See, so it was 49 cents here and 84 cents here. So not the double, but pretty huge growth from the earnings perspective. And after that, again, company look at this. Every year is going higher, higher, and higher, and higher. So only one year in 2008, where a lot of companies wanted liquidation, the company just reduced their profit because they reduced their margin. Okay. Uh, this is a good stuff. Current crisis is different. And actually, the companies uh, like Vimeo, they benefited out of uh, this pandemic uh, because they a lot of people moving online and uh, they're using this software. Now, another parameter is book value. Okay, you can see that book value is kind of growing here as well. Uh, but I already told you that you have to be careful when you're trying to evaluate the book value here. And actually, what I did, I went into another platform and I looked for tangible book value. So when you take all these intangible assets, especially goodwill, uh, you can see that it's actually negative, okay? Uh, 2018, I uh, didn't understand what 2018, what does it mean? Uh, yes, it will be, uh, it will be. Oh, actually, yes, I didn't notice that. Fantastic, good, good eye. Yes, it's dropped here quite a uh, few cents. Yes, correct. Sorry, uh, thank you very much. 
that's the advantage of bit uh, of having uh, uh, of having a group of people because if some someone misses something, other person will notice it. Okay, 2008. Actually, the interesting thing about it, if you look at net profit here, you see the line lower. Uh, what we can see here that it was 1.8 billion, 2.1 billion, 2.6 billion, and 2.622 billion, and this is 2.655 billion. So actually, the company whole net profit went up, but uh, they drop in shares because they increase the amount of common shares. So they issued some shares. Probably those guys like Dell, bigger they, they uh, let some shares uh, sold on the market. You can see here the amount of shares. It was here 403 million and here 410 million. And here 470. So they actually issuing more shares. Okay. And that's why the earnings per share drop. Whereas if you take the whole company, uh, it was growing. Okay, guys, can you put pluses that you understand it? Okay. Uh, but good point uh, for those who noticed it. Uh, very good, very good. It means that you can be an, uh, uh, working as an analyst and you can invest in the stock market. You're very careful, fantastic. Now, uh, let's have a look at another parameter, which is um, uh, price union ratio. I already explained you what price union ratio when we analyze, uh, was analyzing the index. Now let's have a look at this specific company and you can see that uh, NMF, it means non-meaningful figure. At that particular moment, the P ratio was just too high. Okay, so can you imagine the profit, for example, here was 84 cents and the price of the stock was $91. So it's more than 100. Uh, P ratio. And uh, that's why value line just put non meaningful figure. So this figure doesn't mean anything because it's it's uh, off the chart. All right. And uh, but after that, you can see it was P ratio 33, 23, 26, 19. And then in 2016, it dropped to 14 uh, times. And then it's grew back up 20, 22, 26. And now it's 21. Now, interesting thing, guys, I just want you to pay attention to that. Okay, it is very important parameter, the volatility of the company on an annual basis. Okay, uh, even if we take from 2012, because that's what you can see, or if we take from 2011, that's what you see. The company at the lowest point on, during that year was $74 and $111 at the highest level. So can you imagine from 74 to 111, it's about what, 60% move if you're from the bottom. So if you sell, buy it once and sell it once, you make 60%. Now, next year from 79 to 118, roughly about the same, from 64 to 99, from 75 to 112, from 50 to nearly 100% move here, 100% here move, okay? The company itself, the price is very volatile. And the main reason, because, uh, it's so volatile because a lot of other companies in this particular industry are volatile. And you have to understand when the company, uh, a lot of uh, like sell off happens, it happens not because somebody is selling individually this particular company, but because companies sell like exchange traded funds. There are certain industry funds where uh, the company buys the whole bunch of companies included in this particular software. And when uh, people selling off that ETF, they actually have to sell a whole bunch of companies in there. So even good ones, okay? And I presume uh, the movement very often in one specific company is affected by the general industry trend, okay? Because look, if you look at this price here in 2014, where the price was $112 and the net profit was $3.55. So it's kind of doesn't make any sense why the next year, uh, like in two years time, the company dropped to nearly $43 per share where the earnings of the company grew to $4.30. So why, right? So two years ago, company made less money and uh, the price was more expensive. And now the company making more money, but the price is le le less expensive. So you understand that a lot of time on the market, we see this kind of 
emotional activities where people just uh, selling off and they're selling off without even realizing they're selling off a good company. And we as investors, we look for those opportunities and we can buy. Of course, it might, we have to wait for six months, one year, sometimes even more in order to price move up. That's what happened for those guys who bought it at 40 and then the price moved to 200. So they made five times of their earnings within one, two, three, four years. So you put 1 million here, you have 5 million here, 5 million here. So would it be a good investment? I presume it would be fantastic, right? So we could go all to the beach in Cronulla and enjoy, uh, buy a house there and uh, enjoy all our lives, right? So this is the way. Now at the moment, the price as well, uh, can you compare like last year? It was uh, not last year already, in 2019, it was $206 per share. And this year it dropped to nearly 86. And it's dropped so more than two times uh, during this uh, lockdown, but the earnings grew up. So again, the question why? Okay, uh, because people get in emotional, they don't analyze all this stuff, they just sell it off, they don't look at fundamentals. If you're not lazy, if you know how to understand all these numbers, you actually can pick up companies like that and make a lot of money when they move back up. All right. Now, another important part here in this uh, part of the uh, spreadsheet, we can see operating margin. Operating margin 35, 39, 35. So it's pretty stable. They're keeping around $35 level for the last few years. Previously, it was 24 here. We can see it. So after that, they increase it. If we go for net profit margin in 20, around $26 level, say 26% level. So it's pretty good as well. Uh, then we see long-term debt increased. And that's actually might uh, answer our question, why the uh, profit drop. So their debt level uh, increased. Okay, and here they are returning debt actually. So they might sold something here. Okay, in order to and that, that's why their earnings dropped here, maybe it's slightly. You can see that debt uh, they repaid. Working capital was negative here as well, uh, but that's fine for the company like that. And uh, return on total capital is 27% and return on shareholders equity 37%. Now it is a pretty good number. Uh, Warren Buffett tried uh, to invest, tries to invest in companies about 15 or 20 so here is 27 so it means that for each dollar the company investor regardless if the shareholders or borrowed money so they generate uh, 27 percent back so for one dollar gets 27 cents okay so that's why a lot of people asking why the company is keeping debt so they have a huge debt they have 6.4 billion dollars in debt and they generating uh, 2.8 billion dollars in profit why wouldn't they pay that debt so if they pay the debt back to the banks so they will save maybe five percent right the business law but if they keep it in the company they're actually making 27 percent so what would you do right if you were uh the own like i mean the running director of this company would you give the debt back to the bank and say five percent or would you reinvest it if you know where to put money in order to create 27 percent? i presume the answer is obvious okay so the company is pretty good now and uh, the second part of this uh, spreadsheet we can see that here uh, the growth rate is very important we can see that past 10 years within last five uh, ten years the company was growing in sales, 17%, 17.5, in cash flow, 21%, and earnings, 25%, which is fantastic. So it means that if we take in average to last 10 years, 25% increase year after year. And then if we take last five years, so we can see that the growth slowed down. In average, within the last five years, it was 13 and 12% relatively. And then in the future, uh, they are more pessimistic about the future, 10 and 9. And I presume you understand the bigger companies become, uh, the more difficult is to expand in a very big and rapid uh, pace. Okay, so something like that. But still, which is, 
it is quite good uh, rate of growth, believe me, for big companies it is. All right, and another good thing about it, because when we look at these projections, it's always good to know. And um, if the directors tell us, how oh, we're going to make so much money, uh, how often they're right and how often they're wrong. So here we can see earnings predictability 100%. So it means that the directors, when they tell us they're going to make that amount of money, they're making that money and they are 100% of right. So which is, I presume you understand it's fantastic. Again, they never tell you we're going to make $6.63. In the majority of cases, they will tell you we're going to make between $6 and $6.50. Right, and then it might be six dollars thirty. Okay, they tell you the gap, and uh, maybe in this company they have a wide gap, and that's why their uh, predictability is so good. Company financial strength A plus, which is uh, good, but stability. Look at this price stability, fifty five percent only, so uh, it's quite low. That's why we see it that during every year the company moves like crazy, like fifty five percent. But for us, as like active traders, active investors, it's a fantastic opportunity because if you're patient enough and you wait until it goes down, you can buy it and then you can make on the same stock 50 or 30% easily during one year, okay, which is great. Okay, guys, can you please uh, put from zero to 10 how I understand this company? And for those guys who went through our uh, education already, can you put, is it a quality company? Is it an undervalued company? Can you put numbers? For those guys who uh, uh, just already know how to analyze the companies, do you think it's a quality company? Do you think it's an undervalued company? Okay, see you.